How far are you from the river? The Ohio River, sir? Uh-huh. About 200 miles. I went down that river once when I was a kid. There's a place in the river I can't remember. Must have been a gardenia plantation or a flower plantation at one time. For about, about five miles, you'd think that heaven just fell on the earth in the form of gardenias. Hello there, and welcome once again. Why has the fourth way not produced a stream of self-realized students? Why do most spiritual techniques fail? And what is it that Gurdjieff meant by the real mind? This morning I was watching a small black crow in an elm tree he was ripping off a twig to use in his nest building and he succeeded but then jumping around a little bit he dropped it and then took off flew away the crow has a small amount of attention but it doesn't last long and we all have the ability to come out of our inner clouds and shine that light that is our attention but that is not the real mind. That's more like a power that we can switch on. It shines through the clouds and the policeman is awake. And if that's all that Gurdjieff's teaching was about, he would have just called it paying attention. But in fact, Gurdjieff's teaching is about recovering the pre-fall state of mankind, which is quite difficult. And it's something that the policeman is going to have to organize with heavy labors. Gurdjieff says, A monk spends years and tens of years struggling with himself, concentrated on his feelings. But his physical body and his thinking capacities may remain undeveloped. In order to be able to make use of what he has attained, he must develop this body and his capacity to think. And in the same way, when we use our attention, and that does not represent the real mind, that is just a power, and we must use that small opening. With reconstituting the Trium as a Camno in the middle story. But there is a second part to this story which is very important. The first stage in the path is simply to be taught by a self-realized teacher. He teaches you and he sets out a course of work for you and you do it. And it is only in that way that inside you appears the beginning of three-centeredness. Gurdjieff said that this is due to the fifth. The fifth normally flows outwards, but only an Unusual circumstances will it flow inwards and be a food for your own individual growth. This all has to be transmitted from a teacher who is already in that state. If we look at the beam of attention, it flows only outwards, illuminating the outside world. And it can flow like that for a thousand or a million years and nothing else is going to happen. The path is about entering the inside world and has to be passed by somebody who has already entered the inside world, you see. Now this week I revisited the first obligatory Gurdjieff movement. 
the first movement that is taught in that system. That movement has got four parts, the arms, the legs, the head, and all three together. What I noticed is that it's quite easy to work the arms and the legs and the head individually, but when you work all three together, it's a clusterfuck. And carefully revisiting this movement, I recognized all sorts of problems with how spirituality is taught. The first thing is that the intermediary stages of 1 and 2, 2 and 3, and 3 and 1 need to be performed very carefully. And the problem is, and I'm sure this applies to almost everybody who has learnt this movement, that even if they were to complete it, even if they can do the first obligatory, they are clearly missing the point. The point of the first obligatory is that you are able to move each of the three motors independently and individually. Many of the people who do the first obligatory movement don't even notice when they're making mistakes. They have all sorts of ways to cheat. One way is that there are certain critical moments in the movement and if you check at just the right time the movement will complete easily. But the problem is even if you complete the movement it doesn't mean you've had any real development inside of you. Human beings are very good at saying look I did it but then and they haven't actually evolved. The whole society is like that can't you see? Another way to cheat in the first obligatory is to make one centre control all three limbs. For instance the arms which is the easiest centre to use and you can sort of extend the feeling centre so it does the legs and the head as well. And then you can complete the movement and say look I did it. It's not a question about completing the fucking movement. Let everybody in the room do whatever the fuck they want. The only thing that counts for you, for Gurdjieff and for God is that you are able to evolve yourself using this movement. The firsts will be last. And a third way that you can cheat in the first obligatory is to make the policeman, meaning your attention, highly active. So it's just checking, 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 checking. And then you can once again complete the movement and say, look, I did it, look, I did it. But you didn't do it. And I was thinking that all spiritual techniques are done in exactly the same way. If you can use your arms to eat your lunch, then you can more or less use your arms to hammer a nail, and you can more or less use your arms to paint a fence. But nothing is really changing inside of you. You can already use your arms, you're just changing the target. That's not what the Gurdjieff movements are about. That does not change your being. Your mind has to simultaneously enter the three centers. It's quite a big step and will take a long time to do. You have to braid together say the moving centre and the feeling centre. Why is it that people on this planet work their whole life? They work, they struggle, they fight, they do so many things and when they're 80 years old they die and not much has happened. Not much has happened because for something to happen it means you have to increase the ability of your centers, of how the centers can work together. There are many things that you can do that are difficult, but that's not what Gurdjieff means by doing what he doesn't like. What Gurdjieff means is you should do something that is not possible for you. When it is not possible, it means that your centers are unable to work together in that way. 
you do not have the ability for your feeling center to work independently of your moving center. You have not got the being. Most human life is just the same. You can drive a car and you drive a second car. You can talk to a friend and you talk to a second friend. You can turn up for work and you turn up at another workplace, but nothing is changing in you because you're not evolving the use of your centers. You're not really developing anything inside of you. You're just playing a different song on the same record player. That's human life. That is declining. Gurdjieff says, At a given level of being, the possibilities of knowledge are limited and finite. Within the limits of a given being, the quality of knowledge cannot be changed, and the accumulation of information of one and the same nature within already known limits. It will always be a knowledge of one thing together with ignorance of another thing, a knowledge of the detail without a knowledge of the whole, a knowledge of the form without a knowledge of the essence. You see today the politicians talking about change and change and change, but they cannot change anything because the level of being of society is not changing. And in fact, human beings are declining sharply. Gurdjieff says, Such preponderance of knowledge over being is observed in present day culture. The idea of the value and importance of the level of being is completely forgotten. And it is forgotten that the level of knowledge is determined by the level of being. Now I'm going back to the first obligatory because something that I've seen along my journey is that it's normally the first exercise in any tradition that is the most important and if you were able to master it you would succeed. If you were able to actually make the first obligatory work you would form the triumph as a camino and eventually the astral body in yourself. Now last week Gurdjieff said that an atom is the smallest quantity of a substance that can be taken which retains all its properties and it is there at the atom that everything can be learned. And the first obligatory is the atom for Gurdjieff's dances and it is there that everything can be learned. And if you don't learn it, it is not worth doing the second. And Jesus says, Make your way in by the narrow gate. It is a broad gate in a wide road that leads on to perdition, and those who go in that way are many indeed. But how small is the gate, how narrow the road that leads to life, and how few they are that find it. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the system. Often you see people talk about the system or Spensky system, Gurdjieff system, the system. But the system they are talking about is only a system of words. There are a lot of words in In Search of the Miraculous. Where is the system of practice? I mean, isn't that a foundation? It's a foundational idea that the words and the being must be together. And that's only possible if there's a practice 
that takes you from the words to the being. And if you are knowledgeable, you can construct practices directly from everything that is in that book and in Beelzebub's tales. The practices are of such great value that a barrier is placed and that only people who are capable, only people that are really worthy of taking the material will be able to construct the practices themselves. Perhaps that's what it means. Perhaps. There is a great deal of pain in this world and perhaps underneath everything is simply pain. Pain means experiences that are difficult to digest. That's where the pain comes from. It's like energy that returns to you, but it's unpleasant as it integrates with you. That's pain. Agurjev says, at the time when these great savants began to analyze opium, the beings of Goblandia were already using this same mass of substances, and they first called it opium, a word meaning that which makes fantasies. And if our species on this little planet live and die in fantasies and just make more fantasies, even sugar makes a kind of fantasy inside our biochemistry, then there is no doubt that they suffer on this planet and that they are in a lot of trouble. God be with you all. Goodbye.